So, so you're, uh, so you're probably wondering, what the hell race is that guy? I was uh, touring through Texas, or as the Indians down there say, Texas. <laughs> In the city of Dallas. <laughs> With Russell and a Vietnamese comedian named Dat Fan. Of course, he won the last comic standing the year that I was on. And we ran into the Ku Klux Klan. And they looked at Russell and said, Go back to India, you Indian. They looked at that and said, Go back to Vietnam, you Vietnamese. They looked at me and said, Go back to... to wherever you come from, you foreigner. Then they left a burning question mark on my front lawn. <laughs> All right, my dad is from India, and my mom is from Japan. I get my sushi from 7-Eleven. I'm what you would get if Russell Peters mated with that fan. I'm like Harold and Kumar. So, I'm driving with my parents, and we see these cows grazing in a field. So my dad says, now, there is a word that can have a lot of different meanings. Graze. For example, <laughs> for example, a cow can graze. And then I say, or you can be grazed by a bullet. And then my mom says, or it's a kind of a donut. Did anybody not get that? I, I did that joke for 500 Japanese people. Nobody got it. I mean, they come up to me after the show. Oh, you're very funny, Mr. Daniel-san. But we don't understand the blaze that don't the joke. Well, you know, it's the L and the R, right? No! Please explain! <laughs> and, and the Japanese aren't famous for showing their emotions. This is how the Japanese laugh. <laughs> and when I first came out, I said, Alright, make some noise. Who here is from Japan? And 500 people go, So I called up my parents on the weekend. They said they were gardening. I said, gardening? Why don't you just hire a couple of immigrants to do the gardening? My dad says, you bloody fool. A couple of immigrants are doing the gardening.
And people always tell me, your dad is from India and your mom is from Japan, so that makes you half Asian. I mean, you know, 20% of American school children can't find Earth. <laughs> On a map of Earth. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm just glad my parents gave me an easy to pronounce name like Daniel Nyman. Instead of some weird combination Indian Japanese name like Sanjay Hajimoto. or Mahatma Mitsubishi. <laughs> and you know, Indians will try to simplify their names to make it easier for Americans to pronounce. My name is Bale Krishna Krishnamurti Pratap <laughs> Sankara Subramanian Gupta. <laughs> but you can call me Chuck. And you know, I mean, after every show, hundreds of people come up to me and tell me, you're a really good looking guy, you must get lots of women. The problem is, it's all men. <laughs> I mean, I'm surrounded by guys like a quarterback surrounded by his linemen. And meanwhile, hundreds of potential wives are streaming past. And the guys will come up to me, oh, you are very, very funny. I am engineer, but at my job, I am comedian. <laughs> and after every show, there's always one person who comes up to me. Now, you know, my act is 100% clean, I don't do any, any dirty material. But one person will come up after every Indian show and suggest the filthiest, dirtiest, most perverted joke you've ever heard. I said, look, just email it to me, auntie. Now, my Indian uncle is a bit of a racist. He tells me, if my daughter marries someone who is not from our part of India, I will commit suicide. <laughs> then I will kill my daughter. <laughs> I will kill my daughter, then I will commit suicide. <laughs> and they live in a small town in Texas. I mean, who is he waiting for? Amarillo Slim Chakrapati. <laughs> and you know, e everyone in India has to learn English, of course, but Indians tend to reverse the subject and the verb. So they ask you questions like, What you are doing? Why you are doing what you are doing? <laughs> what is this anyway? <laughs> yes or no? Or maybe? And, and I have these friends who don't want their Indian kids, they don't, they're Indian in New Jersey, they don't want their kids to hang out with white people. And I'm thinking, with an attitude like that, why not just stay in India? Why move to America? I don't have a joke there, I just want to get that off my chest. <laughs> and, and here's my impression, here's my impression of my uncle waking up in the morning. Oh, what a beautiful morning. <laughs> I don't need to shower today. <laughs> I have got a beautiful feeling. Everything going my way is... <laughs> Have you ever called technical support at America Online? <laughs> no, I mean, they have these teams of Indians. 
that are trained to pretend they're from America. Thank you for calling technical support. My name is Brad Pitt. What your problem is? Well, tell me, um, Brad, where are you from anyway? Oh, I am from the Northern American province of Minnesota. I mean, even Delta Airlines is using Indians late at night, and I'm half Indian, and I can't understand them. And I think it's just a matter of time before Indian companies start outsourcing to poor Americans. Thank you for calling Air India. This is Mahatma Gandhi. What your problem is. And speaking of America Online, I'm getting like 500 emails a day telling me I need to increase the size of my you-know-what. <laughs> you ladies get those too? <laughs> you know the worst part? They're all coming from my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> Don't clap at that. <laughs> my my ex-girlfriend tried cooking me a chicken omelet once. And I said, a chicken omelet? That's wiping out a whole family at once. I don't have time for you guys to get these jokes. You know, and, and everybody assumes I'm a vegetarian. But my dad is actually from the only Christian state in India. So we eat a lot of vegetarian animals. <laughs> Again, I don't have time for you guys to get these jokes. Like this guy finishes laughing, and the guy next to him is like, <laughs> But seriously, if, if we weren't meant to eat animals, then why would God have made them out of meat? Wouldn't he have made them out of tofu? <laughs> I mean, I mean, for crying out loud, you've got hundreds of millions of people in India starving to death. And they're surrounded by cows. <laughs> oh, what are we going to eat? There is no food in sight. <laughs> ah. Oh, will somebody feed the cows, please? <laughs> so, uh, I think basketball season is going to start soon, and it. Uh, It kind of reminds me, you know, professional athletes say the funniest things. Chris Washburn of the Atlanta Hawks once said, I can go left, I can go right. I'm amphibious. <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal was, was, was in Greece for summer league, and they asked him if he went to visit the Parthenon. He said, we didn't have time to go to no clubs.
But you know, it's not just athletes with the funny quotes. It's presidents too. Like, the other, other presidents had these great quotes like four score and seven years ago. What's it going to be for George Bush? <laughs> I was not aware of September 11th <laughs> until September 11th. <laughs> I was not aware of Hurricane Katrina <laughs> until September 11th. In fact, they asked me uh, how I feel about Roe versus Wade. And I told them, if you're, in North, if you're in New Orleans, row, wade, swim, whatever you have to do to get out of there. <laughs> and what if 9-11 what if had happened on 7-11? Indians everywhere would be in big trouble. Uh, we're going to get these folks, these perpetrators, who were perpetrated. The perpetrations. Of these anus acts. which will go down in the annals of history. <laughs> crimes, crimes against humanity and other people. <laughs> now the, uh, the terrorists operate out of a worldwide network of bitter angry men Losers who grow beards and call themselves Al Gore or Al Qaeda. <laughs> All right, uh, I may not be the best oral tour in the world, <laughs> but at least I am self defecating. My <laughs> <laughs> Vice President Cheney was in the hospital again and he told me he had acute angina. <laughs> I told him, men don't have anginas. <laughs> Dick. <laughs> now they, um, they asked Bill Clinton how he feels about current events. This is what he had to say. <laughs> I, I have something I want to say to the American people. <laughs> I want you to listen to me. I'm going to say this again. I never had <laughs> sexual relations. <laughs> With that overbearing, overweight, obnoxious publicity hound, Hillary Rodham Clinton. No, wait, no, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, I may have had an improper relationship with Miss Lewinsky. Uh, Lewinsky. 
But I did not inhale. But believe me, she did. Now, I know how much you love uh, California up here. And last year they had an election for governor and like 5,000 people were running. And I heard Bill Clinton was thinking about running for governor of California. And what if they'd had a debate between Bill Clinton and Arnold Schwarzenegger? <laughs> Get down! <laughs> Well, now, that is very interesting, Arnold. But what will you say to the millions of illegal immigrants in California? Get out. Hasta la vista, baby. And what will you say to the millions of, of Californians that do not have health insurance? It's not a tumor. What if, what if they got Jesse Jackson? Of course, he'd only talk about one thing, racism. Now, what up? What in the game of pool, or billiards, or what have you, is the object of the game for the white ball? To knock all the colored balls off the table. And when the black ball is gone, the game is immediately over. <laughs> Yet somehow Whitey returns again and again. <laughs> the only game that is fair is bowling. because the black ball gets to knock down 10 whiteys. <laughs> and they all have red necks. <laughs> so, uh, you know, America's a great melting pot, and that's wonderful, but there are certain ethnicities that you will never see in certain occupations. Harong. You are reaching the New York City office of the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> Our offices are rotating in the Chinatown. <laughs> and Harlem. If you don't like a black people, press one. If you don't like a Jew, press two. <laughs> Para Espanol, o prima numero tres. <laughs> My website is comediandan.com. Comediandan.com. And my name is Daniel Nyman. Thank you very much. <laughs>